what is up everybody welcome back to the nothing less channel i'm alexis we're breaking down the two playoff games that happened in the divisional round of the nfl but before anything like share and subscribe please it helps us greatly i hope you all enjoy the content We got the Rams and Packers. That game was crazy as far as more or less who's going to go to the NFC Championship. You have a team with no quarterback. At least Jared Goff doesn't have a fucking thumb, it feels like. And then you have Aaron Rodgers bringing back the, the pack into contention for the NFC Championship title. Last year they lost to the Niners. This time they play another division foe as far as the NFC West is concerned in the Rams for the divisionals. And the Rams just... They didn't have enough offense. They didn't have enough fuel for to go against this onslaught of a Packers offense. So when I did the breakdown in the podcast, I talked about how the the Packers are going to get production from Devontae Adams, but it really depended more on the secondary, the second or third receiver to make plays. So when, I'm going to go through the numbers and you tell me. So you have Aaron Rodgers going 23 or 36 for 296 and two touchdowns pretty good game i think that was a really nice um it's not too much you, he didn't have to force himself too much to win this game you have aaron jones going for 14 attempts 99 yards and a touchdown you have jamal williams 12 attempts 65 yards so you got production all around and then you have adam lazard four receptions 96 yards and a touchdown a, a, it was a very pivotal uh pivotal what am i saying pivotal ugh. pivotal touchdown going into the fourth quarter or roughly in the fourth quarter Devonte adams nine nine reception 66 yards a touchdown he played pretty okay it wasn't i mean he's playing against Jalen ramsey it wasn't about Jalen ramsey and Devonte. it was everyone else against everyone else you know your second and third corner to second and third receiver who's going to win that matchup you have tunyon going four reception 60 yards so the production the production was there i really appreciated that the the Packers were spreading the ball. I thought that's kind of what what got me. I mean, y'all ain't even peep, I bet, right? But wearing a Charles Woodson jersey, that that makes me think they know they got to get everyone else going. Devontae Adams is his own man. He's the top five uh, receiver in the league right now. You don't got to worry much about him. It's more of everyone else. 484 yards total offense against a top five defense, number one uh, defense in the game uh, this year. 300 yard passing pretty good 180 yards rushing that is insane and to think you know maybe there was a falter in some spots i honestly think this was like a perfect offensive game if you ask me mason crosby two for two pretty solid 66 percent third down conversion efficiency that is amazing that should be like well 66 percent i don't know what the average was for the the league in the, this year but i know it wasn't that at 36 minutes in possession time so you knew what they were doing they were controlling the ball they weren't letting the rams get into tempo and sync and all that stuff when when you look at this game you you knew the, the rams were gonna have trouble passing the ball and i mean you know jerry goff aaron Rodgers, you know but what what really was an interesting thing was the the packers like was their defense gonna be up to the task to control the running game and even maybe the bootleg or play action of all of the Rams. And yes, that 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 that's what happened. Their their interior pass rush to me was King Kenny Clark was playing great defense. Uh, their their um their outside pass rushes were doing the thing, but I feel like the interior was fucking up Jared Goff all day. Honestly, it felt like that. Um, though Cam Akers did have a good running day, I th I felt like they did. Like the the Packers defense did a great job of containing golf, not letting him extend the plays, and also um, the pa the pressure got like got delayed uh, passes thrown and it, it it faltered like I mentioned the in sync of all that of all the passing that's that's kind of what caused it. But Kenny Clark I, I think I mentioned him I think before and I think this time Kenny Clark was going to be one of those problems in that in that Packers defense. Jair Alexander, I'm not going to not mention him. Jair Alexander played great. 
Um, that defense played awesome, honestly. I mean, to think they only gave up to 244 total yards. That's pretty good. Four sacks. So, I'm telling you, the pressure was awesome. When we look for the Rams side of things, Jared Goff, 21 to 27, 174, one touchdown. Jared Goff usually kind of has like a stat line like that, but it, it doesn't really stand out. And you look at it and kind of, eh, and that's what it really was. It was just a mad game, but you needed a guy that could give you a little bit more. And he can't. At least now, maybe next year he won't be there. I don't know what's going to happen there. Like I mentioned, Cam Akers, 18 attempts for 90 yards and a touchdown. He had a really good game. He really was kind of the fuel for most of those points. And I think I think next year he'll have a blow-up year. When you got, like, the receptions for the Rams, it kind of goes what I was mentioning. Josh Reynolds, thir- three uh, receptions, 65 yards. Robert Woods, eight receptions, 48 yards. You're seeing kind of the, the idea here, you know. They're, the receiving core wasn't getting uh, enough touches. Maybe it was because of the pass rush. I would say it was a pass rush and just the immobility of Jerk Off. You know, he's not he's not the most mobile quarterback. He can move a little bit, but he can't manipulate the pocket like an Aaron Rodgers can where he could extend the play and all that. Um, but to get into, like, all the insights, for this game, what, what was interesting was just – the Packers getting into the NFC Championship for second straight year, it it really shows Matt Lafleur is that guy, and this team seems a little more competitive than last year. I feel like last year was a little more um, of a glamour team, but this team seems like more of a it's more cohesive to me. It's a more cohesive unit, and it does it's doing a lot of good things, a lot of things right. Um, Aaron Rodgers' game ties Joe Montana for. Um, the second most 250 yards, two touchdown games in, uh, I think it's a postseason history. That's 12, just if you ought to know. Also, Devontae Adams has six re- six receptions or more in 13 straight games. That's including the playoffs, most by a Green Bay Packer or Green Bay player since 1950. Devontae Adams, has, he has stick them in his hands. I'm kidding. I don't know. I don't know. But, yeah, the guy the guy's great. And here's here's a couple good ones. I mean, Packers are eleven to zero in at home in the playoffs when they when they score first. They scored the f- uh, field goal to start the game. I guess if you're going off that, they're never gonna lose. If that happens in the NFC Championship, th- just write it down. They they're not gonna lose. Packers tied the Steelers for the second most postseason wins in history, thirty six. These guys, these uh, this is like the cloth of all the NFL. You know, that's that that's that's that like Jay Z, Tupac type of thing cloth that we talk about in hip hop. That's kind of the idea for the NFL. You know, you got you got those teams. You got you got the Packers, the Patriots recently, the Steelers, Dallas, all those teams, even the Giants in some ways. But those type of teams have are just cut from a different cloth. So when we hear that, it, I am surprised. I thought they would have had more. To be honest. <laughs> but yeah, I mean the the Rams and the Packers they they did good. Um, the Packers did a great job. The Rams did a great job just to even get there with a with a quarter a backup quarterback and a quarterback that was half of what he, he usually is. Um, the Rams shouldn't be mad at all about this season. I I know Aaron Donald was hurt um, emotionally and physically. I know going into the game he had a lot of rib issues and he was sad emo- like sad as fuck because they lost. You know, I, I only speak from the outside, but this was a good year. You weren't supp- supposed to be here, and here you are. Divisional round against the Packers. Get into the nightcap. Uh, we had the Ravens versus the Bills. Lamar Jackson versus Josh Allen. They were uh, part of the same draft class. Uh, Lamar Jackson wasn't supposed to be what Josh Allen was. In some case, Lamar La- Lamar Jackson got the MVP last year. Josh Allen's a top uh, MVP candidate for this year. That If you're looking at it from this perspective, the Bills, they don't run the ball. They just pass. The Ravens, they don't pass the ball. They run the ball. So these are just little things that were said around during the week. Makes perfect sense. How did it play out? Josh Allen, 23 to 37, 206, one touchdown. Conservative game. This game was windy. It was fucking like Justin Tucker missed two field goals. Just take that into consideration and take that in, uh, information in as well. Stephon Diggs, eight receptions, 106 yards, one touchdown. Guy always balls. 
and you know in the playoffs Minneapolis miracle fuck him too um John Brown eight receptions 62 yards so one thing that was uh one like it's, it's kind of the same thing for Green Bay Stephon Diggs and then who else you know Gabriel Davis was that guy last week John Brown was this week and this is good because this game wasn't going to be won in a high scoring manner at least how the the wind was in concern and also the temperature it was more of who was going to make enough plays to get the points on the board if you looked at it from this perspective the Bills did enough uh, offensively to move the ball or even stop the the Ravens from from moving the ball so they were playing a field uh, it was a field position so where the punt will go however it go all that stuff most of this time from what I remember uh, most of these were like in the middle of the 40 like in the 40 yard line that's where most of the team started they only had to go 30 yards to get in field goal position so and Tyler Bass the guy the guy's pretty good he had a really good year I don't know if he's a pro bowler but he should um Justin Tucker obviously yeah he made one and obviously the score was 3 to 17. I don't know if I mentioned that, but 3 17 Bills won. Yeah. Not mentioned in this video that but I'm gonna mention it now. So yeah, the 101 yard uh interception was a critical moment in the game. If it wasn't for that, uh the Ravens wouldn't have to have gone so crazy on offense, like try, try to score, but they needed to after the pick six, 17 3 was crucial with the time going down already with the fact they only had two timeouts with the fact that they weren't their office wasn't in sync like that yes the pick six was a big thing carry on so the bills 340 40 yards uh total on defense they did not give they gave up a lot compared to what the the bills put up on offense but they bent not break that's what they needed to do we also mentioned this Bills defense is not that great as far as like the numbers are concerned. They're not that hot and, and they don't have that much talent as far as like, you know, they don't stand out. Like if you consider talking about necessarily like last year, the 49ers, I felt like they were star studded all around. Or if you, even if you consider maybe like the Rams, you know, that those type of teams. The Bills don't have that type of mentality, but Leslie Frazier as a defensive coordinator, I think he was former in Minnesota as well. The guy's a good, he's a good defensive coordinator and he played a really good game. Honestly, they gave up 150 yards rushing, but they gave up like less than 200 yards passing. So considering this game was going to be won in, in key, st uh, in key plays, I think you take that. And I mean, three points and they had a pick six. Keep in mind, Teron Johnson, number 24, if I'm not mistaken, 101 yard interception to the house. It ties George Teague in 1993 for the longest uh, pick six of all, of all time. That game was in the wild card round. No cap. I know my stats. I just I just found that one. Don't worry about it. But also four sacks. Um, Jerry Hughes was living in the backfield. That's what you needed. You needed to control. What they did was they had that front four. They were locking that part up. And the, the edges were getting there. You know, a lot of people think that Lamar Jackson like, likes to just scramble. But I feel like the guy the guy likes to be a pocket passer. Like, I think even Chris Collins would have said that. And you could see it. He he doesn't really want to get out. Um, He gets out, obviously, because he needs to. And he can because he's mobile. But he likes to sit there. And Lamar Jackson is getting to him. 14-24, 162 and in an interception subpar maybe I would say mediocre if you're asking me but subpar in some ways Lamar Jackson left the game around five minute mark of fourth quarter with a concussion didn't come back Gus Edwards and JK Dobbins both ran uh, 20 attempts total 84 yards and for with them and then you had a little bit of a uh, Lamar Jackson that's where you get the 150 but the, even then you know they averaged 400 going into last week and then all that happened Excuse me. Man, that Red Bull's hitting right now. But the Ravens, they just didn't have enough offense. It go, same thing, if you look at it. John uh, Hollywood Brown, four receptions, 87 yards. <laughs> Come back down. Mark Andrews, four receptions, 28 yards. And that was the thing. Who would they have thrown to? Willie Sneed is, what, their number two, it feels like. Des Bryant, they picked him up a couple weeks ago. But you're not going to throw to Des Bryant. He's not your number two. He's not your number one. Is he even your number three? I don't think so. Mark Andrews might be your number one. Hollywood Brown's your number two. Willie Sneed's your number three? 
that's not a good that's not a good tandem if you're asking me. But to the defense for Baltimore, they played their ass off. 220 yards total. They played a great game. They've made Buffalo punt when they needed a punt, but it goes to field position, like I mentioned, and that's where Buffalo took advantage. You know, maybe 220 is not a lot, which it ain't, but it did enough. 17 yards. I mean, 17 points given up. It's honesty. It's a great stat and all that. But also, what killed them was penalties. Eight penalties. Um, some of them came at the end, but it's just you know, like you can't win like that. And obviously, as a Saints fan, I, I early on that's how they were, and they cleaned it up. And the Ravens, for the most part, I think throughout the year, they were pretty good with uh, penalties. Um, but you're kind of disappointed that they're. The offseason acquisitions didn't do too much in this game, and even midseason with Yannick and Gakwe, Calais Campbell didn't do too much. It's kind of sad, but the Ravens had a good year. Um, you expect a little bit more. I feel I feel like a lot of teams, a lot of player, um, a lot of people thought it was gonna be Super Bowl or bust for them in ways, just because of the how they built the team, and just the elite head coach Lamar Jackson, a very good player, or you could say a. Uh, He's top seven quarterback at this moment, former MVP. Bills, eight-game winning streak, including the playoffs. Can't say anything about that. The guys are playing crazy. Josh Allen is playing turnover-free football. And Stephon Diggs, best best uh, wide receiver in the, uh, this year. Tenth team to happen. This, one, this is a good one, too. This is the tenth time that two teams with six-game winning streak mean the playoffs. So both of them had a six game winning streak and or six game plus, I'm sorry. And the home team is now nine and one in this situation. That's a good one. I didn't I didn't know about that one, but that one's pretty good too. Um Josh Allen against top ten defenses, six and zero. The guy just doesn't lose. I know he had like forty one uh, uh what did I read? Forty one touchdowns and like twenty five rushing touchdowns in the red zone. The guy just doesn't throw a pick or some something like that. The guy's an animal. Stephon Diggs surpassed Andre Reid most games with 100 plus receptions in the season for Bills. That's nine. That's that's awesome. Stephon Diggs first year making this kind of impact. You know who knows? Maybe next week Buffalo holds the playoff game. We don't know what's gonna happen against Cleveland and Kansas City. That's a game to watch for sure, though. And I already mentioned the Teron Jackson, Teron Johnson, uh, that, and also the Bills. I don't know how this works, right? Peep this though. They're the first team since 1991 to have zero rush attempts in the first quarter. Like, if you had asked me, how's that going to win you a game? But fuck, man. If you, if, you, if you can make enough plays passing the ball, why, throw, how, why are you going to run the ball, you know? I know that I picked up Devontae Freeman and put him on the practice squad, but you don't need him, right, I guess. You got all these ballers. But with that being said, I hope you all uh, liked how we broke these games down. And if you did, please leave a like, please leave a comment, and also you can share and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm Alexis on Nothing Less Channel. Uh, enjoy the podcast. It's going to come out Monday or Tuesday. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff. I hope you all enjoy. I'll catch you on the next time. Peace.